Okay, let's talk relatively briefly about three objections to Kant's theory. We may only get to two, but we're going to shoot for three. So, as with all theories, there are objections to it. That doesn't mean necessarily that the objections succeed, just like it didn't mean that for utilitarianism or any other theory that we're considering. We're considering the theories because they're plausible enough to warrant our understanding and considering them. But every theory is gonna have some objections, just like every scientific theory has data that counts against it. But what you do is you pick the one that overall the evidence most supports. That's what we do in science. We don't try to claim that there are no problem cases or problem pieces of data. And so here I'm going to talk about three of the objections to Kant's theory. I don't think that this sort of way of doing things, of like considering a theory, considering objections to it, uh, and moving through the semester like that should make you uh, cynical or skeptical about the possibilities of success. But in a course like this, we're kind of looking at the big picture, the arguments in favor, some of the arguments against, and trying to spur y'all to think more deeply about it on your own. Okay, so let's talk about some of the problems for Kantianism. Okay, so let's get down to the slide I mean to be on. So remember, what Kantianism really breaks down into, if we want to talk about the problems for it, are two claims. If I can't universalize my maxim and still achieve my goal, it's wrong to act on that maxim. That's the standard of wrongness that we talked about. And if it's wrong to act on a certain maxim, then I can't universalize that maxim and still achieve my goal. Well, that's just sort of taking it and flipping it. So it moves both ways. It's, it's if you can't universalize it and still achieve your goal, it's wrong. And if it's wrong, it's because you can't universalize. That's the only, basically the second claim is saying that's the only way something can be wrong. First claim is compatible with there being other ways of an action being wrong. But what the second claim is pointing out is that no, this is the only way. Is it can only be wrong because you can't universalize the maxim and still achieve your goal. So because it's of those two claims, remember what we learned about counterexamples, especially counterexamples to conditional claims like this. If you wanna provide a counterexample to a claim if A then B, you need to find a case that uh, exhibits A, but where B is false. So, for each of these, we can just work that out here. If we want to find a counterexample to the first claim, we need to find a case that you can't universalize the maximum and still achieve your goal, but it doesn't seem wrong. So you've got some action for the first case if we want to find a counterexample. You need to find some action where it looks like I, if I universalize it, imagine everybody with my goal doing the same thing, I cannot imagine still being able to achieve my goal. There's reason to think I, in that world, I could not achieve my goal. But where it actually doesn't look like my action is wrong at all. And we, in fact, we've talked about some of these without noting this about them. Um, cases where Kant's theory seems to in, entail that it's wrong, but it doesn't seem like it should be wrong. That's the, that's the counter example of the first kind. Of the second kind, there might be some, what we're looking for with in the second case are uh, examples where it looks like something's wrong, but it actually passes Kant's universalizability test. That would also be a problem for Kant, where it's wrong, but you go through it, you see your action and your goal, and you imagine everybody who has your goal performing the action you're thinking about performing, and you say, in the third step, you say, mm, it looks like I could still achieve my goal, but it also looks like the action is wrong. So it looks like in a different way, Kant is getting the wrong result here. So those are the two kind of problems we're looking for. So I invite y'all, if you really want to think about it, if your you know, heads aren't twisted around too far at this point, um, pause here. Think about whether you can come up with such cases. Uh, but here are the cases I'm going to give. Oh, I actually don't give any cases here. I just give you a blank. So I, I'm asking you to fill in the blank here. And I'll talk about some cases. They're not on the slide here. Um, can you find something that fills in the blank accurately here? Some maxim that fits case one, some maxim that fits case two. Uh, so here are mine. Again, pause here if you want to think about it for yourself for a minute or so. Uh, a case where I can't universalize it and still achieve my goal, but it doesn't seem wrong. 
what if my maxim is to go, I, I'm going to go to HEB at 3 a.m. That's my act, my intention. My goal is to avoid crowds. So if I didn't have kids, if my sleep schedule was not dictated by uh, my kids, uh, maybe I could stay up till 4 or 5 a.m. and just sleep in the next day. Uh, and that way I could go to the store. I guess H-E-B is not open at that level at that time. But if I wanted to go to Walmart, for example, I just go to Walmart, right? Uh, barely anybody there at that time. It's open 24 seven. So uh, just be a lot quicker of a shopping trip. Maybe I don't like crowds. I don't like crowds. Uh, but here's the thing. I wanna know whether this is wrong, right? I would never walk through this reasoning normally because I know that it's not wrong, but send it through Kant's test. My maxim, go to the go to Walmart at 3 a.m. My uh, in order to, that is the goal, avoid crowds. Um, two, universalize that maxim. Imagine that everybody who wants to avoid crowds goes to the store, goes to Walmart at 3 a.m. Wait a second. Step three, can I still achieve my goal of avoiding crowds in the world where everybody who wants to avoid crowds goes to the store at 3 a.m.? It looks like the answer is no. It looks like if everybody who wants to avoid crowds, which is a substantial number of people, a lot of people in the world want to avoid crowds, or a lot of people even in Cleburne where I live want to avoid crowds and having all of them at Walmart at 3 a.m. would make a crowd so I could not achieve my goal. But it's certainly not wrong for me to go to the store at 3 a.m. to avoid crowds. There's nothing morally problematic about that. Okay, we'll talk about maybe how to solve that problem, but let me go to the second case. So what we're looking for in the second kind of counterexample is a case where um, I actually, it is universalizable. My maxim is such that if I universalize it, I can still achieve my goal in that world, but where it seems wrong to do that thing. So here's my example here. This one's maybe a little harder to get away from. If I am walking on a trail, I'm thinking of um, a trail in East Texas. I'm not a big hiker at all, but uh, sometimes some of my best friends and I will do like an annual camp out. And one of the things we sometimes do is we go hike the 4C trail, which is a 20 mile trail um, in East Texas. And suppose I'm out there by myself one day, I decide to go hike it by myself um, on a lone, long, lonely walk of loneliness. And uh, I am out there, nobody's out there. And I walk by a small pond. There are some small ponds on that trail. And there's a real small toddler drowning in the pond. And there's nobody else around from, but me. And I know this and I yell or whatever. At any rate, it doesn't take long to drown. And so I know that if I don't save this child, child's gonna drown. Now, suppose I formed the maxim. Now, I hope y'all know that I'm not this bad of a person. I may be not great, but I'm not this bad. Suppose I formed the maxim, I'm going to keep walking in order to finish the trail faster or, uh, and, or, and in order to not get my shoes wet. I want to finish a little faster because I just want to get out of here. I want to go get some dinner uh, and I don't want to get my shoes wet because that's uncomfortable. Might get blisters on my feet. So I'm going to keep walking and knowing that that child will die as a result. So basically I'm choosing to let a child die, even though it would only cost me two minutes and uh, getting my feet wet. Uh, suppose, you know, I'm almost done with the trail, for example, so I wouldn't even really have to carry the kid very far. Um, so let's run it through Kant's test, right? So my maxim is keep walking, leave the kid in order to get where I'm going faster, in order to finish the trail faster. Let's try to universalize it. Uh, I imagine everybody who wants to finish the trail faster keeps walking and leaves the kid there. Now, imagine if everyone did that, if everyone, when they saw a kid on the trail, just kept walking in order to get to the end of the trail faster, um, could I still achieve my goal of getting to the trail, getting to the end of the trail faster? Yep. Yeah, there's nothing, there's no problem there. Like, it's not like, the, you know, the trail is just going to be littered with toddlers and, or something and I can't get to where I'm going. It doesn't 
toddlers don't drown in ponds that often for one thing. Um, so it looks like if everyone, when they encountered a drowning child, just left them in order to get where they were going faster, there's nothing that would keep me from getting where I'm going faster, from finishing the trail faster. I'm going to finish it just as quickly if everyone acts like I am as if no one acted like I'm going to act and I'm the only selfish person out there. It's not going to, everyone doing it is not going to affect the goal that I have in any way. So it looks like it, I can universalize it and still achieve my goal. So it looks like Kant should say this is perfectly permissible. But this is obviously deeply morally wrong, and I would be a horrible person to do this. Just horrific. I should go to jail. I, I don't know. Let's not talk about legal punishment, but I would at least be a horrible moral person. I would have acted deeply wrongfully. And yet Kant seems to say it's okay. Okay, so those are two problem cases. I don't really have a great answer for the second one. Kant actually, you know, Kant talks about things called imperfect duties. Um, he's, it, it, Kant is very complicated and he actually, his, his theory is slightly more complex. So maybe if you really want to read Kant, I could direct you to the places where he talks about cases like case two. Um, he has something that he says about that, where he thinks he can get around it. And maybe he can. Case one, I'm not so sure about, uh, but maybe what he'd say is, well, we really need to talk about what your maxim really is. Is your maxim to go to the store at 3 a.m. precisely? Is that really what you're trying to do? Or are you just saying, I want to go to the store at an off time in order to avoid crowds? Because if it's the second thing, which it is, there's nothing special about 3 a.m. to me. I kind of picked a time at random within the range of midnight to 6 a.m. maybe. And if that's your maxim, just to go at an off time, not to go at 3 a.m. specifically, well, then a lot of people could do that because you've got whatever, this six or seven hour window where all the people who want to avoid crowds could probably go and still not have a crowd even though they were all doing it. So if you universalize it, you can still probably achieve your goal. Maybe he could say that. But weirdly, it's probably going to depend on how many people there are where you live and how many uh, people want to avoid crowds. And that seems like it shouldn't depend on those things. All right, let's talk about one last problem real quick. Uh, the problem is how to describe your maxim. And it's really, it's called a generality problem for Kant because you can describe your maxim as we just saw with that second case, or sorry, that first case when I was trying to talk about how Kant might respond to it. We just saw that you could describe your own maxim slightly differently. You can actually describe it in many different ways. So suppose I have a, my maxim is I'm gonna rob a bank to pay off my debt. It can't be universalized and me still achieve my goal. Right? Because if everybody who has debt tried to rob a bank, the banks are going to hype up security. Um, they're going to be watching, they're probably going to be watching people who have loans out because those people are all robbing banks and you won't be able to successfully rob the bank anymore. So you won't be able to pay your debt. You won't be able to achieve your goal. Can't be universalized. And so Kant's going to say it's wrong. And it should say, he should say it's wrong. That's the right result. But wait a second. What if I want to solve the problem like this? I say, wait, 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 wait. My maxim is not to rob a bank to pay off my debt. My maxim is to rob a Citizens First Bank on Tuesday or on uh, Tuesday, February 23rd in order to pay off my debt of $28,264 or $28,264 exactly. So now when I go to universalize my maxim, you might think, well, you, yeah, I'm doing the same thing, but what's the difference? Well, here's the difference. When I go to universalize that maxim, I can still achieve my goal. Uh, I, what I'm imagining is that everyone who wants to pay off their debt in the amount of $28,264 robs banks or robs, well, yeah, I guess really the, the goal is the, the part to get that's important for you to get specific on. So take what I have written down here. Everyone who has the goal of paying off that amount specifically goes and robs a bank. How many people are there like that? Not very many or vastly, vastly fewer. And it's not really going to change banks' security measures. They're not going to say, it's not going to be such a flood of robberies that they change what they're already doing. So I'm going to be just as likely to be able to achieve my goal of paying off my debt as if no one else besides me did it. So I can universalize this and still achieve my goal. 
So the problem is that the rightness or wrongness of an action seems to depend on how generally you describe your maxim and you can generally describe your maxim or you can describe your maxim at different levels of generality pretty much in every case. Um, and in every case of wrongness, you can just get more specific with how you describe your maxim and get out of the wrongness. And that seems like a horrible view. So pro third problem, uh, this third problem that we've been talking about um, is Kant needs to give us a way for deciding what is the actual, what is the, the true description of the maxim, right? And he needs to do that in such a way that we still get cases like the bank robbery coming out wrong. Well, that should be wrong. Any, any moral theory should be able to account for why robbing banks is morally wrong. Okay, and that is where I will leave y'all today. <laughs>